Hey guys, welcome back to the 4-1 week. Today we're going to talk about wireless security, how to set a wireless password and why you actually need one. So what's actually going on is if you have wireless at your house to where you can get online with a laptop or a cell phone or a tablet, if it doesn't have a password on it, anybody that's in range of your router can access it. Now it doesn't actually mean where your router's range ends, it means wherever somebody has a device that can reach the range of your router. So if I'm a mile away and I have a really powerful laptop, my laptop mic can still see your wireless network even though your computer or your tablet may only see it for a hundred feet or so. So it's really important to make sure you have a secure password on your router because if somebody gets on it and they look up pornographic material or download illegal music or do anything else that's against the law, they don't go to jail. You do because the internet is act or the internet through your service provider whoever's name it's in could possibly go to jail because of those acts that are being performed. So you need to make sure you have a password on your wireless and that it's secure and no one knows it unless you give them the password obviously. But the way that we have to set it up, you're not actually going to be able to see me because I'm going to be blocking an area of my screen you need to see. But what we first need to do before we get started is we need to know what type of router we're dealing with and this is the router I'm going to be working with today. It's a Linksys. And if you look on the box right here, it tells me my model number. So I know my Linksys router is model number WRT54G2. So this information is going to come in handy in a second. And the process we're going to do to do this is going to be the same across any wireless router. But you still need to know the information of your router. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so if you notice, the first thing I want to check is to make sure I'm connected to my router. Well, I haven't done anything crazy with my router. It's a brand new router. So I can assume this router right here that's named Linksys is probably the one I'm connected to or the one that I need to be connected to. So I connected to that router and to prove that I'm connected, I get the option to disconnect. And all I did was come down here and click on the little Wi-Fi symbol and see what type of wireless routers I have in my area or wireless networks so I can assume from the list that this is the closest one to me because it has the strongest signal so I connect it to it now if you're in an area that has a ton of these you might want to try to hardwire your computer to your router rather than connect via wirelessly but since we're doing wireless I figured I would show you how to do it over a wireless network as opposed to the wired and what I mean by wired is from last week when we talked about the different routers and modems just take a cat5 cable and connect it from your computer directly to the router and then you won't have this wireless signal you'll have another signal down here alright so first thing like I said we wanted to make sure which model of router we had and I said mine was a Linksys WRT 54G so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in this list and I'm gonna search for Linksys so I'm going to scroll down. Here's Linksys. I click Linksys. I'm going to click Find Password. This is going to come in handy in a minute. You'll see. So I'm going to scroll down, and I see I have this Linksys 54G All Revisions because I have a version 2, or All Versions. So over here, I notice under Username and Password, it tells me that there is no username, and there the password is Admin. And this is default. We can change this once we get logged into the router. So the next thing I need to do is log into my router so I can change these settings. It's very easy to do in Windows 7. Windows XP is a little different. Vista is the same as what we're about to see. I want to come into the search or program files box right here and just type in CMD. And if you're on Windows XP, right over here you'll have a run button. You just click run and you still type CMD and then click enter. So I type CMD, click enter. I get this black screen where I can type a bunch of text and run a bunch of commands. This is a very powerful command line interface, so we don't want to do anything crazy. There's just one command I'm going to teach you, and it's very simple. I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G. That's short for IP config or IP configuration. I hit enter. I'm going to scroll all the way to the top and come down a little bit. What I'm looking for is this default gateway so I'm gonna highlight this we need this default gateway and what I'm really uh, certain about or wanting to find out is this number right here and yours is probably gonna be a 192 number if you see anything other than that 
um, you might want to send me an email or something or maybe call your local computer company maybe help you out this is known as a private IP address so again this is our IP address for this specific router this is the IP address for my computer that I'm working on right now this is the IPv6 address we're not really too worried about that right now that might come in handy in a few videos but right now we just want to know this IP or excuse me this default gateway so you might want to write that down if you can't remember it yours is probably the same as mine it may even have a zero right here and it may even have a one or a two right here and that's perfectly fine if it is the same as mine this is a very uh, handy number we need to remember and I'm not gonna write it down because I can remember that I've done this a uh, few times so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna close this and in my internet browser it doesn't matter if you use Internet Explorer Chrome or Firefox we're gonna come up here and we're gonna type that number in so I'm gonna type 192.168.1.1 it doesn't matter if the backslash is there or not I'm gonna hit enter now it's asking me for a username and a password and if you remember correctly from that router passwords page this router doesn't have a username and the password is admin so all I did was type ADMIN and now I'm gonna click OK and this is gonna bring me to the router configuration of this specific router I'm working with again yours is gonna look different than this unless you have a Linksys router like I have but for the most part all of the steps we're gonna follow are gonna be the same so we're not too worried about the router name we're not worried about anything right here if yours doesn't say DHCP right here in this drop down you might want to change that um, sometimes we want to use PPPoE and sometimes we might even want to use a static IP but if you're just setting this up at your house one router and a few computers you just want to make sure you have DHCP and again this is that local IP address for my router the subnet mask yours will probably be the same as mine if it's a little different that's fine and we don't want to mess with anything right here in a few videos I'm gonna show you something else that's very interesting to do for your network and we're gonna change some numbers in here but for now we just want to mess with the wireless so you would assume we would go to security but security is actually something totally different let's give this a second to load this has to do with filtering and this gets a little bit more than what we're gonna talk about with firewalls and VPNs we're gonna stick in that wireless tab right there so when I click on wireless uh, let's give it a second to load okay now that we have the wireless page up we can see we have some basic wireless settings and then we're gonna get over into the wireless security we'll talk about that in a second the first thing mine says I'm on a Wi-Fi protected setup that means my router has this little button right here that I could press the button on my router and then press the button on a device to connect something which that's perfectly fine but we want to make this secure first so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on manual and yours may not have these two options that's perfectly fine yours may show what mine's about to see on the manual page okay so you may see something like this on your page now what this means we have a network mode mixed B or G yours may even say N because they have N routers out now if you have N you definitely uh, may want to leave it on N or leave it on mixed if yours has mixed I'm gonna leave mine on mixed now this is the network name this is whatever we're gonna give that router name to where when we pop up this menu again we're gonna see that name so just to keep in line with the video series I'm gonna name mine the 41 wheat we'll leave the wireless channel the same and we can actually turn off the SSID this SSID is the name of our wireless network and if I hit disable when I pop this list up over here it will say unidentified network and I will click on it and I can manually type in my name I'm not gonna do that now just because this is very basic I'm gonna click save I'm gonna click continue when we get back to that page it's gonna verify that our name has actually been changed and if you notice it's not gonna load right here because what happened is my computer is connected to the Linksys network and I want to connect to that 41 wheat network so what I have to do you notice down here the symbol is actually changed and it says I'm not connected that's perfectly fine we actually want that to happen because if that happens that proves that what I was trying to do actually was implemented so when I click this little box down here now I see the 41 wheat so I can click connect it's gonna take a second to connect just like normal 
Nothing too crazy. All right, now we're connected. So I'm gonna go back to this page and I can just simply hit refresh. Or what I can do is take out all this and just hit enter again and get back to the main page of the router. And it's not working properly. So I'm just gonna backspace everything and I'm gonna type 192.168.1.1 again. When we get to here, we'll go straight to the wireless page and we can verify that the name has actually been changed but now we want to put a password so I'm gonna to go to wireless security and this may take a second to load again just because I'm doing this over Wi-Fi as opposed to being hardwired to the router okay so we're back up and we're in the wireless security tab and if you notice our security is disabled and I can prove that by when we logged in and we connected we didn't have to enter a password we just connected so I want to make that enabled but I need to know which one to choose. Now, WEP is the most basic. We, I generally stay away from WEP. So what we want to do is a WPA. Now, WPA2 is the more uh, common one just because it's newer. And the enterprise would be something you would use in a business. And radius is also something you would use in a business where there's a larger area or network to cover. So what we're going to try to stick with is a WPA2 personal. So when I click that, the screen's going to change and it's going to verify and give me some different options to choose from. So we'll give that a second to load. Okay, now it's asking me what type of algorithm I would like to choose. I generally don't change this. I just leave it as default. And then we're going to give it some shared key. Now, if you notice, it doesn't give us anything as far as security on how low or how high of a key we can type in or give us like, hey, you need an uppercase, a lowercase, and a number. There's none of that. It's just asking us for a shared key. Now, my suggestion is to generally use like a telephone number or a cell phone number or something that you don't mind giving to friends. Because if you're going to have Wi-Fi and some friends are going to come over, they're going to want to use your internet and you're going to allow them. And you don't want to give them a personal password that you use for something else. So I would just do like your area code, let's say it was one, two, three, and then four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine, zero. Now obviously you wouldn't want to use this or anything basic like password one, two, three, four, because somebody can be able to choose that. So let's just save this just to show you how it works. Now again, this is going to kick me out because it, something's changed and my computer noticed that, hey, this is asking for a password now. We didn't provide the credentials, so it kicked me out. And if you notice this symbol, just now, as I was talking, it changed. So it's saying I'm not connected anymore. If I were to try to go to Google or something real quick, it would, it's, it's not connecting. So I know that this computer is no longer connected to the internet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this again. We're going to connect. And now it's asking for the security key. Well, I know what that security key was. And we could also hide the characters as we were typing it if we so choose to do so. So now that it's connected, I know that, I don't know why it put a 2 behind it, but I am now connected to the 41 Wheat network. So now if I go back to the internet, um, I have internet access. I could log back into that router same username as nothing same password as admin go over to wireless see that the name has changed maybe we could change that back and take the two off uh, again I'm not exactly sure why the two is put on there and there is no two here so I'm sorry for that but um, it works we typed in our username or excuse me we typed in the password to get into this SSID and we are now secure now, if you noticed, I did all of this from a laptop, and you know I'm from a laptop because my battery's running low, but what I'm trying to get at is if you, we were in an apartment complex and someone had their router that was unsecure, I literally could have logged into their router and changed their username and password. I don't suggest doing that as a joke, but my point is if you don't change your router's password or put a password on it, somebody else in fact could and lock you out. Now if that does happen, it's very easy to fix. All you do is you go to the back of the router physically and there's a little reset button that's generally red. You just take a pin, stick it on the pin or stick it on the button and hold it down for about 30 seconds and it will reset everything and then you would have to come back here and redo everything. 
Now that's pretty much it for today. Um, we'll stop there. I have some other stuff I want to show you with routers, but due to time restraints, we'll worry about that at another time. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please post them down in the comments or send me an email. Get back with you as soon as I can. Thanks.